one of the biggest bills in the kitchen is going to be for meat. So it's crucial you keep costs down. But that doesn't mean sacrificing flavour, especially when you use some slow cooking magic to get the best from cheap cuts. To get value for money, it always pays to ask an expert. And fifth generation award-winning master butcher, Danny Lidgate, is a man in the know. One of the great things about going to a butcher is they're going to have more cuts available than most supermarkets. So you're going to see things that people don't know about. So one example might be the beef ribs, a great product for slow cooking in the oven. Especially cooking on the bone, you're going to get more flavours from the bone. There's some really nice pieces of juicy meat. These are only used for mince in the past. Now people are using it for braising or slow braising or even barbecuing it with some really nice marinades. The ox tail are less popular now than maybe they used to be. Small little muscles make up the tail. Once that's slow cooked, they all fall apart. Really tender, juicy meat. Also, oxtail is sublime in stews, curries and soups. Another great cheap cut for slow cooking is one you saw me using earlier, lamb's breast. It's one of the least expensive cuts of lamb, and it's also delicious slow roasted or stewed. Here we have the shin of beef, where you can see in the shin is made up of lots of little different muscles. These are always moving, always doing work, so slow cooking will give the best end results. It's gone out of fashion a little bit, but it should be enjoyed by everybody. It's a fantastic piece of meat. Here we have some ox cheeks, and when they're trimmed, you end up with a really lean piece of meat. Obviously with the cheek, the cow's always eating, munching on grass. This means they need a lot of cooking. But essentially, it's a really nice, healthy, lean piece of meat with fantastic flavours. Ox cheeks also make an incredible ravioli or ragu. And if you're a pork lover, why not try pork neck? It's a succulent alternative for a slow Sunday roast. Here we have a muscle from the shoulder. It's called feather blades. The reason it was called feather blades is because when it's cut, each piece looks like a feather. The gristle tends to be slow cooked, and the more it's cooked, it will turn gelatinous, giving a lovely jelly and juicy liquid to the meat. Fantastic for casseroling, pies and stews. There are so many cheaper cuts, which are brilliant for home cooking. It's important with all these forgotten cuts to find out how to cook them. Don't be scared of them. They're really economic, but full of flavour. And the end result is a fantastic meal. As a chef, one of the biggest kicks I get is taking an ingredient that doesn't cost much and turning it into something that looks and tastes like a million bucks. My next recipe turns what used to be a decidedly unfashionable cut of meat into the star of the dish, fit to grace any table. Slow roasted pork belly with fennel. Slow roasting works better on fattier, tougher and unfashionable cuts. Whether it's a cheek or even a neck or this amazing pork belly. It's a fantastic way to transform cheap cuts into amazing melting perfection. Take a very sharp knife. Bring the pork belly towards you so you're over it and you've got all that pressure and weight. Using the tip of the knife, I'm just sort of nicking it. And go across the pork belly. Long strokes with the knife. And take your time. Turn it 180. This time, what we're doing is just sort of cutting those nice little sort of diamonds. But as that starts roasting on top, it starts to get nice and crispy. Take little handfuls of salt and just sort of rub it in. Bend it over and in all those cracks. Really helps to get a nice, crisp crackling on top. Roasting tray. Get it really nice and hot. Take a whole bulb of fennel. To intensify flavour and to keep the meat succulent, I'm braising my pork belly with strong, vibrant spices and vegetables. Crush and peel three whole cloves of garlic and add to the fennel. Olive oil in. Fennel in. I like the nice, strong aniseed flavour that goes with that nice, rich, dense pork. Fennel seeds. Delicious. Star anise in and just a couple of cardamom seeds. And wow, they're like little bangers, like little firecrackers. Incredible. Lovely. Fresh bay leaves. Get your pork skin side down. Just sear the top of that fat. That locks in all that amazing flavor. Then I'm gonna flip it over and get it nice and crispy. And then, one fennel seeds embedded in those little cracks. Now, some white wine. 
The minute that white wine hits that pan, you can just smell that light fragrance and with fennel. Allow the wine to bubble away and reduce until the alcohol has burnt off. Time to have the stock. Now, the stock goes in just underneath the skin, so it roasts on top. All that meat under there is going to be submerged, because what happens in the oven, the top goes crispy as anything, and the stock reduces and braises at the same time. Really important that you bring that back up to the ball before it goes in the oven, otherwise it will never boil, it'll never get up to temperature. It smells incredible. Slow roast the pork belly at 180 degrees for two and a half hours. Look at that. You've got that nice, crispy skin on top. You can see how much of the stock has evaporated. Put that onto the board. It looks stunning. To make a delicious rustic sauce with the flavour-packed contents of the roasting tray, first, get rid of the excess fat. Take a couple of slices of bread. It's like a perfect sponge because you just lay that on top and drag it, almost like a net. And it just absorbs all that fat. If you want the perfect fried bread, trust me, stick that in a frying pan. A nice teaspoon of mustard, whisk that in. And then simply simmer for a few minutes before pouring into a serving jug. Mm. With your pork belly. Always use a nice serrated edge knife. You can hear that. Wow. That is amazing. Incredibly tender. That belly of pork is going to almost melt in your mouth. You've got that sweet meat under that crispy belly of pork. What an amazing way to cook a very cheap cut of meat. First up, easy bolito misto, a classic Italian mixed meat dish. I'm starting with some Italian fennel sausages. Fry them until coloured, making sure all sides are nicely browned. Set them aside, then slice chorizo, a spicy Spanish sausage with a wonderful smoky taste, and fry it so it releases all its incredible flavour. Next, chopped carrots, celery, garlic, and add to the same pan. This keeps in all the flavor. Stir in the puy lentils. These are excellent for slow cooked dishes because they retain their firm texture and shape. Next, add a bay leaf and some fresh thyme sprigs. Then the sausages go back in, along with chicken stock. Simmer until the lentils are tender, then seasoned to taste. Finally, sprinkle with chopped parsley and serve. Simple to prepare, a cinch to make, and packed full of delicious, hearty flavors. My twist on an Italian classic. Magnificent, easy, bolito misto. My next everyday, effortless dish is slow-cooked aubergine. Dice the aubergine and fry in hot olive oil until colored on all sides. Then add a finely sliced onion and chopped garlic. Cook until tender. Add cooked butter beans and pomegranate molasses, which is a sweet, thick and glossy, tangy reduction of pomegranate juice. Season. Next, add a can of chopped tomatoes. Bring to a simmer and cook until the aubergine has a gloriously soft and silky texture. Stir through chopped mint, pile onto toasted bread, and finally, for a lovely salty tang, crumble over some creamy feta cheese. Minimum preparation, but slow cook for maximum flavor. Aubergines like you've never tasted before. One more dish that uses time to transform a humble ingredient is perfect slow cooked beef. Start by frying the beef shin in hot oil, seasoning as you go. This is a very economical cut of beef. As it slow cooks, it also makes the most delicious gravy as the marrow thickens and flavors the sauce. In the same pan, saute chopped carrots, peeled whole shallots, sliced celery, 
peeled and chopped ginger and garlic. Next, add tomato puree and cook for a few minutes. Add the shin back into the pan with a glass of dry white wine and the juice of an orange. This deglazes the pan, adding incredible depth of flavor. Pour in chicken stock, season and simmer for an hour and 20 minutes. This dish is brilliant finished with gremolata, a dry Italian salsa made with chopped herbs. Simply chop parsley and garlic together and mix in the zest of an orange or lemon. When the beef is cooked, rich, unctuous and beautifully tender, scatter over the lovely fresh gremolata. Simple, satisfying and crammed full of wonderful taste and textures. Delicious.